Flamingos in Love by Casey Groka. In the center of the savannah, there lived a flock of 100 bright pink flamingos, and one of them was called Kevin. Kevin loved where he lived. It could not be more beautiful at this time of year, with its blue skies and lush green grasses. Most days, Kevin would take a stroll through the village where he lived. Every time he did, he would see a flamingo called Lily. She was the owner of of the fruit store in the local busy market. <laughs> Lily's fruit store was special as it was the only store that sold a new fruit, Tutti Fruit, that had just been unveiled by the famous inventor, Tom Pringle. Whenever Kevin went to the market, he would see Lily's store with its vibrant displays and Lily calling out the special offers. When he saw and heard her, he would get a strange feeling in his stomach. And as much as he wanted to go to her store, he just couldn't. At school, Kevin had been in the same flock as Lily. But he was pretty sure she didn't remember him. One day, on one of his walks, Kevin lingered a little longer by Lily's store. Lily saw him lurking and called out, Kevin, come and get some of the delicious new fruit. Kevin froze. She knew his name. He really wanted to go and say hi. Come on, Lily called again. I'll even let you have a sample for free. And he really, really wanted some delicious new fruit for free. But because of the feelings that he had for Lily, all he could do was blush a darker shade of flamingo and scurry away as quick as he could. As he turned, he bumped straight into an angry-looking flamingo. This puffed-up flamingo, Alexander, had also been in Kevin's class at school. He didn't like Kevin then, and by the look on his face, made it very clear that he still didn't like Kevin. At school, Alexander had always teased Kevin about having a crush on Lily, even though he told him that he didn't. I can't ever go back there again, Kevin vowed to himself. When Kevin returned home from shopping for his mom, he would always make them both a tasty hot bacon cob. This was one of his favourite foods and he loved to eat it outside and savour the view of the savannah. Kevin and his mom sat for a few hours before his mom said it was time for dinner. Kevin, his mom hollered from the kitchen, you forgot the fruit for dinner. You'll have to run back for me. His mind raced with excuses, but he knew his mum wouldn't be having any of them. He used to be fine going to the market on his own, but after what happened earlier, when he got to the market, Kevin's plan had been to avoid Lily's stall and go to a different one to get the fruit. The plan was soon useless. It had gotten so late and all the fruit stalls were closed, except for one, Lily's. 
As casual as he could, he walked over. Maybe Lily won't still be working, Kevin thought, hopefully to himself as he approached the store. Hi, Kevin, called out Lily. Have you come back for that free sample of Tutti Fruit? Kevin just stared blankly at her and then looked away. He whispered to himself, Do not say anything embarrassing, Kevin. Keep it together. But little did he know that while he thought he was saying it to himself while walking as far away from the fruit stall and Lily as possible, he was actually saying it out loud. Keep what together, Kevin? Do you want anything else? Lily smiled at him. <gasps> she heard him. Oh, gosh. She held out his tutti fruit and waited for the rest of his order. Kevin turned a completely different shade of pink. Poor Kevin. Kevin took flight. Lost in his own thoughts, he didn't hear Lily flapping after him, calling his name. On the journey home, Kevin was lost in his thoughts. He kept replaying what had happened and feeling embarrassed all over again. It was silly. He knew it was silly. There was no need to feel embarrassed about talking to Lily. After all, she'd called out to him, hadn't she, right? The next time he saw her, Kevin told himself that he would talk to her, take action and not just run away. Kevin, not far from home, when he suddenly heard an extremely loud, high-pitched scream from somewhere behind him. He lifted his head and looked back and just saw a blur of pink feathers. The blur of feathers screamed again. That's odd, thought Kevin. It sounded a bit like someone calling his name. It sounded a bit like Lily calling his name. But it couldn't be Lily, as he had left her at the fruit store, hadn't he? Kevin turned back again, and he could not believe what he saw. <gasps> it was Lily, and she was being kidnapped by Alexander. Kevin had to think quick. No, not think, act. Kevin took off like a rocket, but it was too late. Lily had already been thrown into Alexander's car that was driving away at 100 miles an hour. Kevin didn't know what to do. Should he try and follow the car? Or should he go to 10 Hardship Road, Alexander's house? He knew only too well where Alexander lived. He'd had to walk by it on his way to school every day. And every day, Alexander would shout out something mean to Kevin. Kevin chose the second option and put 10 Hardship Road into his sack now and took off as fast as he could. About halfway there, he spotted an old grey flamingo trying to cross the road. Kevin remembered the Boy Scout rule number 28. Always help someone when they need it. Kevin had loved the Boy Scouts and didn't want to break the rule. He pulled over and got out to help her cross the road. It might have only taken a minute or so, but it seemed so much longer as he needed to help Lily. Kevin leapt back into his car and carried on until he reached Alexander's house. There was Alexander's car. Kevin jumped out and sneaked down the side, scrambling over the locked back gate to the back door. It was also locked. He crept to the window and as he peered through, he could see Lily. 
She was tied up, but there was no sign of Alexander. There must be another way in. Kevin realised he was standing on a welcome mat. His mom always kept a spare key under their mat. Surely not. Kevin lifted up the mat and there it was. A key, a key. Without a second thought, he opened up the door and snuck in as quiet as a mouse. So Alexander didn't hear him. Lily's eyes went wide when she saw him. But Kevin gestured for her to stay quiet as he went to get something to cut away the ropes around her. Once she was free, she threw her wings around him and whispered, Thank you so much for saving me. Kevin really wanted to tell Lily that he loved her. But he didn't have time. He was worried that Alexander would find out that he had saved Lily. But also, Lily had already gone to kiss him. After the kiss, and when Kevin had changed back from his embarrassed red colour to pink, she told Kevin how much she liked him. Kevin decided that it was time to tell her too. So he did. They thought they heard Alexander coming back and decided that they had to get out of there. But Kevin told Lily again how much he liked her and that he wanted to date her. They both then hurried out and Kevin helped Lily over the gate before jumping over it himself. He got them both into the car and drove off. Kevin took Lily safely back to her house, said goodbye and gave her a hug. He promised that he would come to see her at the fruit stall in the morning and that they could arrange a day when they could go and see a movie and get some food. It's a date, Lily said. Then her face dropped. What's wrong? asked Kevin. Oh, your fruit. I was chasing after you to bring you the fruit that you left. The fruit? Oh, my mom will be mad. I was supposed to get some for dinner. Kevin had forgotten all about dinner. Well, I guess it's a good job you're dating someone who works on a fruit stall. I haven't got any tutti fruit here, but will this do? Lily lifted up a box with the most delicious arrangement of fruit that Kevin had ever seen. When Kevin got back home, he and his mother had the best dinner they'd had in a long time. He was so happy that Lily finally knew that he liked her and that she was okay, that he fell asleep thinking about seeing her tomorrow and arranging their date. And maybe, just maybe, trying some Tutti fruits. You've been listening to Flamingos in Love, written by Casey Grucock. A huge thank you to actor and producer Tonya Daly Campbell for performing this story. This was produced at Badgerbrook Primary School by Nathan Human, with support from Wolverhampton Arena. The music was licensed under a Creative Commons license and was by John Bartman. More information at freemusicarchive.org forward slash John Bartman. Mm-hmm.